Yoruba group warns Southwest governors over planned terrorist governors' attack on schools in regions as bandits abduct minors in Zamfara State and the National Consultative Front NTF moves to dislodge the APC and PDP as they inaugurate a mega political party. This is Plus Politics and I am Mariana Cohn. A group under the EGs of Akpapo Odua Koya has advised governors of Ogun, Oyo and Ondo states to put measures in place to stop terrorists allegedly planning to kidnap school children in their states. Meanwhile, at least 100 minors operating between Anka and Maru local government areas of Zamfara state have reportedly been abducted by bandits, although... The Zamfara state government has debunked the reported attack with the commissioner of police in the state, Mohammed Shehu, saying the news is a figment of the imagination of the writers who are trying to insert fear and confusion in the minds of the public. To discuss this with me is public affairs analyst, best man Jumbo Nze and Babashala Adegui. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. So, Bestman, I'll start with you because you are some uh, you're a security expert and you obviously have an idea as to how these things work. Um, Governor Rotimi Akeridolu had responded first to um, the, the Yoruba group who had said that they needed security to be upped in Ondo, Ogun, and Oyo states. And he said that there were enough measures in place to deal with these criminals. But then, I mean, this is the same kind of assurance that was given to the people of, of Zamfara State just after uh, the kidnap of students. And then 24 hours later, another set of people were kidnapped. I'm not even talking about the one that they debunked today. So really, what should people believe? Well, um, thank you for having me. But um, one thing I know is that at times like this, it is hard to get the people's confidence um, because um, over time we've been traumatized. We've been uh, we've seen we've seen the security threat. We've seen the crisis. We've seen the the um, what I call the the incessant taking and kidnapping of kids. So I do not blame the people if their trust level is low. That said, um, for Governor Kredulu to, to say what he said about the measures in place, I'm sure they know what they are doing, and I'm also sure they are making plans which they will make public. So I think we should give them the benefit of the doubt based on the fact that they have the larger picture. But I can also tell you that um, states like Lincoln are not taking it um, lightly at all. Hmm. Um, Bawashala, the coordinator of the Odua People's um, Congress, you know, your state, Rotimi Uluomo, faulted um, Mr. Femi Fani Kayeri. I mean, he found himself in this whole conversation. He made a claim that the kidnap uh, of the kingpin, uh, kidnap kingpin Abdullah um, Wakili was not, that he was not the most dreaded um, person that they were looking for. He's not the dread, most dreaded Wakili. And um, they were saying that, look, um, what Fanny Fire was saying was a lie and he was misinforming the people. And this is an issue where um, Bestman has just said it's very difficult to regain the people's confidence to, you know, try to, you know, take away fear from the minds of people. But how do we manage this information in times like this? Because there are people who are also trying to profit off of misinformation and maybe stoking the fire for more of these things to happen. So how do you deal with it, especially when, with Fanny Kayode in the mix? Well, uh, one thing I've always known is that um, misinformation has gained ground since even before 2015. And I think it has become something that is of a daily um, thing in Nigeria now. We are not even sure what is true and what is right. Yeah, last week, uh, OPC arrested Wakili, being the, uh, the most dreaded kingpin in Southwest. Um, we are not sure if he's the one. We are not sure if he's not the one. But, but he was parroted. Well, we saw we saw videos of we the We saw man. the video. We saw how those things. But the Nigerian police came up to tell us 
that the wrong man was arrested. Instead, the three members of the OPC were arrested and they jailed or detained for a few days. Now, a few days after Femi Karnikayo is now coming out to say the wrong man was arrested, that it was not the uh, it was not the wanted person or this other. The question we should ask is, whenever there is an information on insecurity, what steps are the Nigerian police taking? Are, they, uh, are their decision based on sentiment? Are their decision based on uh, information available to them? Or they feel that like uh, maybe a certain group of people are trying to take vengeance on a group of people, you get. So the Nigerian police has a lot of things to do in respect of insecurity. And they also must try as much as possible to let us always know the truth. Because in everything that happens, I always believe that there is an higher type of truth. It is that truth that the Nigerian police should work on and in collaboration with the state governors. For example, something happened in Ogun State a few weeks ago where a village was attacked by the bandit. Few days after the Ogun State Governor came out to, to announce to the whole world that no, the people that actually attacked the village, they were not the Fulanis or they were not the henchmen. And of course, the, a chief also from that village came out again to call the governor a liar. So at this point, Nigerians really are confused as to what to believe. I'm going to throw the same question to you, best man. How do we handle information? Information management is very important, as we all know, when it comes to issues of crisis and terrorism such as this. How do we even start to deal with the criminals involved if we have so many information that we really can't rely on? If the governor is telling one story, the police is telling another, and of course, a chief of the community is saying, well, all these things are lies. How do we get the truth out there? Well. <clears throat> Um, we are at the point in our national life where politics uh, have come to play in every aspect of our of our actions. Um, a situation where Fanica they will say he's not the Bakili is not the person, not the most dreaded person they are looking for. Um, both sides might look at it as is he playing politics? Is it because he's probably supporting is Sunday ago, and the OPC are the ones that came to have done this politics. Uh, we look at the situation where, where when the government says it is not after full and that it's probably another set of people. People will look at it and say this might just be politics. So we are in that spirit. Our information management system has been corrupted by reason of politics. Um, we have to now ask ourselves the question, who determines what is true? Where does politics come into the information we release? Mm -hmm. It is a terrible situation, but we still can't give up. Because security information are not things you throw up in the public space. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean I said, Lagos State Government is not taking this lightly. I know for sure the actions being taken, even codedly without making noise about it. So, in that regard, there will be distortion of information. Hmm. So, my dear, I can see that politics have come to play in our information management system at such a time as this. Let's talk about um, the riot act that was read by the SSC. I mean, we all saw that video. He was talking tough. He said, in fact, Nigerians were sure that the issue of kidnapping was going to be a thing of the past. But then we saw it resurface. Now, fears in the Southwest. It just, it, I'm, let me start with Ifani Kayode. Why is he, he's not an intelligence official. He's not a security official. How does he even get involved? He used to be an aviation minister. It probably if he was a minister of defense, we'd probably say, okay, this is a reliable force. Why do we play politics with the lives of human beings in this country? Why should it even be a thing that we want to play down on, whether it be in the north, whether it be in the south? And we see the issues between Governor Autumn and the Bauchi state governor. It's just more, more political than you know, realistic as it should be, as a security issue. Why are we playing politics with this issue? Just like he said, uh, as in best man, um, politics has taken over every 
aspect of At the expense of human life? At the expense of human life. Nobody cares about human life now. Nobody cares about the situation of things. What they care now about is, um, I must be justified what is happening. I must have a say. Femi Fanikayo did has nothing to do with military or intelligence or Nigerian police. Where he got his own information from, I don't know. He was never a minister of defense. He was never a SSA to the government on security. He was just a SSA to government domestic affairs and also minister of aviation. And uh, this is a man who doesn't live in your state. And from what I learned, he's based in uh, Abuja. So where he got his own information, if, if he has that information, for me, it is not his own duty to come on here and announce to the world that the man is not the most trained uh, person being looked out for. So he has no right whatsoever. The, the group that came out to, uh, the OPC that actually came out to, uh, got the man arrested, actually, in a way, it's not that he's being recognized by the state governors, it's not that the federal government recognizes them being security outfit. If we're to be a more tech that actually came out to say that they maybe the South God the Southwest Governor would have supported or what has happened. But <clears throat> for and for all we all know what OPC stands for right from the beginning. Anything Yoruba, they have this sentiment for Yoruba group. So are you saying that they're being one sided, they're being biased or, or they're taking I, laws into their hands? What exactly are you insinuating? I, I, I can I'm not saying that uh, they've been biased, you get, but to I to, to an extent, we are all sure that the, the interest of OPC is the security of Yoruba. So for them to get that man arrested, I'm very sure why not go into another village and get another uh, Fulani or another man arrested? Why Wakili? Was there any relationship between them before? Or maybe there was a, there, maybe there was a grudge between the two of them? Nobody has that information. For that man to have been arrested by OPC, there must be a report that they have and the, that got him arrested. Now, the question is, we, the state governors, accept OPC to work with them. Last week or two days ago, Adams, uh, Ghani Adams came out to announce to the whole world that there's going to be another security outfit. Up to now, no Southwest governor has turned him down. No Southwest governor has come out to distance himself from the uh, Ghani Adams outfit, security outfit. None of, none of them has tried to that. So, in other words, silently, you have accepting OPC to work with Amotekun and maybe the other security outfit you have out there. In Lagos, we have the LN LNSC, the Lagos Neighbors something. And in Inogun State, I know of so safe. There is a so safe in Inogun State who are also working with other security outfits in Inogun State. So the question is, if you want to accept the Aga, uh, Ghani Adams as security outfit, then let it be done. Let everybody know. If but you, but if they if they were silent according to you accepting them why would they be arrested after a couple of days like we know they have been arrested and put behind bars so if they were allowed or accepted by the governors this would have been made public to us so maybe the government is not on the side of Ghani Adams well um, I need to let you know that sometimes sometimes you need to be neutral as a governor you need to be neutral because you need the support of people, but you can't come out to say it out lightly. I need to support. But this is a security situation. It's a security Should situation. Should we be... I mean, I know 2023 is in the radar and everybody's trying to play safe, but how many more people are going to die at the hands of these bandits on, before we now decide that enough is enough? What is expected, personally, just like I made mention earlier, let the governors invite all the security outfits in Southwest. Invite all of them support them where necessary. There is a report now that says that they are planning to kidnap school children. I don't know where they got the report from. What are the state governors doing in respect of that? Are they taking it, this information with levity? Are they serious about it? Nobody knows. Well, I don't expect them to come out and announce to the whole world that security uh, apparatus or the security plans for the state. I don't expect them to do that. You get so. They need to put a lot on this on ground. If you have to support OPC and other security outfits, support them. The security of the people, the security of the uh, of properties, they are more important to the state governors. The state governors. So they have to do a lot of things and work in work hand in hand with the Nigerian police. 
Hmm. Okay, best man, back to you. Um, like he said, he preempted my next question. Um, Ogun, Oyo and Ondo states are the states that were fingered um, as spots, hot spots where these people were uh, allegedly going to hit. In fact, um, the leader of this group said on good authority, they have it, that these people are targeting schools in these three states. And they've been complaining about this issue of herders killing farmers and, you know, all of the troubles in their, their states for the past two years. Now, when will the governors in these southwest states decide that enough is enough, we need to take decisive actions and not politicize it again? The issue of the police and these security outfits working together, how do we make sure also that these security outfits don't go rogue like we had it in, the, in time past with the likes of OPC? How do we make sure or how do governments and security agencies make sure that these other people who are working in collaboration with them to bring the peace do not necessarily <coughs> cause more trouble for the people? Um, okay. Before I answer, I think I have to go back to the last question you asked um, about um, people speaking. This is the time for populism. Everybody wants to be popular. Hmm. Now they are also starting on the security situation to try to uh, boost their profile. So when Faneka, when this person comes up, they want to find favor with the people and with the mass, even when they are misinforming people, and this must stop. I must also tell you that when they say they target Ukun, Oyo, and Ondo State, we also know the diversionary tactic in terrorism and great warfare. They can divert attention to those three states why they are planning to hit Lagos and other states. So, like I said earlier, the governor and the machinery in Lagos are not taking it lightly. And I also expect Governor Kredo, Fire Me, and Mdakwabidu to also um, swing into action. But I must tell you, these, these three governors are not those type of people. They know what to do, and they will not come public to tell the world this is what we are planning to do. This is the strategy we are putting in place. I know they are, I'm sure they will be working right now. Now, on the issue of synergy, I, um, in security, security is not just the job for the armed forces or the police. We must have a holistic approach to security. Even Mr. President signed the National Security Strategy Law in 2019, where he said, if we, even the civil population, all security um, and all anybody that has any link with security to all play a vital role, especially in information gathering. So I think this is the time for the police to be a bit more civil, liaise more with the industry and push their information gathering network to work for their own advantage. Okay. Now, let's talk about the school kidnaps that they are alleging and the attacks. It seems to have become a business of sorts. And business is good. It's been really good for them in the north. And, and who's to say that it would not be good for them in the southwest? Hence, you know, these people continuing to invade all of these states and the schools and exploring those loopholes. Um, apart from the fact that the Zamfara State gov governor has been trying his best to continually try to get those people who have taken, been taken from the schools to be brought back. What else can the federal government do in support? Because, I mean, I like that there's, it's, no, it's a no-fly zone, you know, they're shutting some things down, but how decisive is the federal government? Because it's taken, for, it's taken so long for the government to deal with this issue of banditry. And I keep asking, what needs to be done or what should happen for government to really shut everything down and make sure that these people are dealt with decisively. Because, again, how, do we, how are we certain that the people who, the, the intel they have on um, these bandits, how sure are we that they're not copycats? How sure that, are we that, that people who are not exploring or exploiting the fact that, look, this is happening very well in the North. Maybe we should try it here and say that we're also bandits. Because the police seems to not have enough intel. So, what do we do? Is that a question for me? Yes, sir. Okay, then. Um, at least we've seen it 
in the right direction with the change of the service chiefs. And, and I'm sure the new service chiefs have come in with new impetus because you cannot, you cannot continue the same dance steps when the music changes. As the music changes, you change your dance steps. If you were dancing shortly before, you go booty when it comes to any music. So I can tell you that the government is now, well, they seem to be moving in the right direction. But then, it is not enough. When we talk of a no-fly zone, and we still see that these bandits are still armed, who supplies their arm? How do they get their even food? Who supplies them? How do we cut this off? What is the Air Force um, surveillance team doing? I said earlier, but now we should have had massive recruitment into the police, into the armed forces. Even the Amotech and the other um, support, support um, units should also massively recruit. I must also tell you that the Southwest is a different terrain from the North. Mm -hmm. um, yes, if you're tasting the honey, you wouldn't want to stop. So wanting to come and make money in the start to fire kidnapping could sound that try to look at practice. But I know something, the South is a different area than that. Southwest we could be a bit more proactive. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a bit of that even in the in the plan of the governors and especially like I said in Lagos. So I think um, the, the things just give the new service teams some time to see uh, whether the desired changes will be there. And don't also forget, some of the equipments we thought that have just started coming in. The mm -hmm. Tokano, the, the other um, musical drone that just came in. So I think it's been bad for long enough. Let's just exercise, see what happens within the next few months. Then we can now reach them. Okay. Baba Shola. He's, he's giving out some hope. He's handing out some hope cards for us in the Southwest. He sounds a bit more certain because the terrain is different. Uh, and we know what's, why it's very easy for what, what's happening to happen in Zamfara because they, you know, they have large expanse of land and you know, people can go for hours in the bush. And you probably, But he's saying that the terrain here is totally different. It might not be very good business. Um, going forward, because I, unfortunately, we might just have another story with this headline again of people being kidnapped or captured, do you think that maybe the press is also playing a role in fueling or giving these people some form of attention, um, hence them continuing? Because someone mentioned that, oh, these people thrive on you know, attention and the media, they use it, to, they piggyback on it to continue perpetrating their crimes because it makes them powerful. I don't believe that, but where, where, what are your thoughts on this? Well, actually, um you cannot rule it out. They read. The fact that we're having they this have conversation. Access, they have access to information. And another thing is, they, uh, they have all the resources required of any bandits or terrorists to have. They have their own intelligence. They know what is happening in the town. They know when the policemen or the Nigerian army will strike. They know the movement of all those people. So they know when to strike. It's not a matter of the newspaper or whatever. One thing I've just noticed between the present service chief and the last one is you don't get to read much about security in the newspaper or hear about it on here. Unlike the, the previous ones, the, the, the step they are going to take, the plan you read in the newspaper, you get. So I think with this new plan of holding information on security strategy or security plan, for me, is a very good one. Yeah. However, that does not stop this bandit to get their information, even from the cycle of the security outfit. They must have one or two people. For example, look at what happened. Is this San Farao, Bauchi? Whereby they discovered that where the bandits were was not far from the barracks. Yeah. So definitely they were getting, and they discovered that some of the harmonations they had were actually supplied to them by those in the barracks. Because they looked at the number and they discovered that this ammunition... So, so it means that there are moles in the army, obviously. It is everywhere. It's everywhere. So the Nigerian, the Nigerian army, the Nigerian 
Air Force or Navy or wherever they are, they need to tidy up their home and try to pick out, pick out the, uh, the saboteurs among them. Mm -hmm. Let them identify them, take them out. Everyone you have arrested, have you actually gotten information from them, extracting information from them on how they are getting this, how they are getting these uh, ammunition, the weapons? I don't know what you have done with all those information. If you just get them arrested, take them to court, and put them in the jail, but I've not even heard of anyone being put in jail as well. So what happens to... Well, most of them have been... Um they have been reintegrated into society. But we hear money. that they have also become the, mo the, cash the people they are who are them, giving information. They are back. Yes, exactly. They are going back <laughs> with the money. They are getting more weapons, so, getting more am ammunition. So what do you expect? Wow, it, it looks like uh, we're in between a rock and a hard place. But I want to say thank you to um, best man John Bonze. Thank you very much uh, for being part of the conversation. And Baba Shala Degui, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. We'll take thank a short break. You. And when we come back, we'll be talking about the new mega party that has been floated. Yes, of course, we focus on 2023 elections as the opposition parties have moved to dislodge the APC and the PDP. What's new? We'll be right back.